curtain closes on three days of practice, qualifying runs, and class eliminations at Indy. And the stage is set for championship competition. 32 competitors remain in each of seven championship categories. Winners will be selected through a series of five elimination rounds. And for some, the work goes on almost until race time. Labor Day at Indianapolis Raceway Park is drag racing's greatest moment. Every square inch of grandstand and pit area is jammed to capacity. It's an all-American crowd, the speed set. For the most part, they are amateur racers who compete for the love of the sport and bring their kids along to watch. Your next door neighbor bitten by the racing bug. It's a kind of speed holiday decorated by thousands of colorful decals. Not all the decals end up on the racing machinery. For world champion Ed Miller, in his 1968 Hemi Barracuda, the racing bug has been pretty rewarding. This New York mechanic once collected $16,000 for a single run, the richest purse in drag racing history. At Indy, Miller is shut down by Wally Booth's Michigan-based Camaro, which hangs onto a one-second handicap right down to the wire. But the crowd has come to see Big Daddy, the unrivaled favorite. He faces the fastest, strongest field of fuelers ever assembled. Garlitz comes to the line against Duke Gray, one of the lesser-known dragster stars. As Big Daddy's crew prepares for this young challenger, few really believe that a second Nationals crown is in the cards. Garlitz knows Ray is hungry for a victory. But the lesser-known driver is more apt to put more nitro and squeeze his car and lean on his engine harder than the pro because the pro he's thinking of the outcome of the entire event where the lesser known driver is facing big daddy ray builds a quick lead and then gets bent out of shape in the stretch as garlet pushes hard to win by inches now it's the semifinal round in the popular super eliminator class where the spectacular funny cars hang out here, Bruce Larson's blown Camaro lines up against the double-A competition rail, driven by Paul Stage, a young machinist from Illinois. Winner of the spring national title in Super Eliminator, it is up to Stage to stop an all-funny car final in this class at Indy. Stage blasted to a win, but it couldn't have been closer. In 7.99 seconds and 171.75 miles per hour. Although drag racing is divided over 90 classes, most of the cars fall into roughly two categories. Especially modified competition cars or dragsters. And the more familiar super stock or passenger type machines. Acutely sensitive reactions under pressure pack situations. The sign of the true professional in the sport will win more races than sheer horsepower. Here TV star Dick Smothers makes a surprise try at super stock drag racing. A fine road racing driver, Dick handles his Hearst equipped old super stock over the quarter mile like a veteran. Turning in a 10 second performance his first time behind the wheel. Shifting is the name of the game in the super stock categories. Dragsters, on the other hand, are tubular frame, custom-built racing cars. Their engines are often supercharged or fuel injected to produce over 1,500 horsepower. Because of their lightweight and great power, they often don't use transmissions. Braking at the top end becomes a big headache, and most dragsters depend on Hurst Earhart safety disc brakes for stopping power. And oh yes, there's one more difference. The dragsters are usually noisier by several thousand decibels. And now the speed show really opens up. Arlen Vanke rolls to the line to face defending national champ Bill Grumpy Jenkins in his hot Camaro in the Superstock semifinals.
as Grumpy smokes off the starting line, Banky grabs a quick lead and will not be denied. Shutting down the 1967 champion with a 110.97 mile per hour run. A surprise victory for the Akron, Ohio star is making a determined drive for the title. Meantime, Garlitz has eliminated Tom McEwen. And with rivals like Perdome, Mike Snively, Connie Kalita, and John Mulligan already on the trailer, he suddenly looks like the man to beat again. Do you feel any pressure at this particular point? You've done this so many times. You've won it twice. Uh, is it still, is it, is it beginning to affect you at this particular moment? No, it's too early in the race yet, Brock. I don't feel any pressure yet at all. When, uh, when does the pressure start to build? When it gets down to the... Yeah semi-final round in the final round. Uh, any particular changes that you made in the car in the course of these two runs? Are you uh, made any adjustments at all? Just uh, minor tuning adjustments, trying to dial into the atmospheric conditions that are here at Indianapolis. Is, uh, is the track about uh, what you expected it to be? Yes, the traction's coming up real well. Benny the Wizard Osborne, the world's champion, poses a major barrier to Garlitz's title hopes. The defending nationals king and the current world champion. How do you call this one? Something has to give. The Oklahoma Wizard wants this race in the worst way. He knows that King Rat is the one you have to shut down. And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Colin Garlitz is super cool. Rolling into the staging area with extreme care. Nerves are pulled tight. And Osborne is the one to break. Leaving off the line, the wizard is a split second too eager. He squeezes the tree a fraction too soon. The dragsters post identical times of 6.88 seconds, but only Big Daddy makes the semifinal. is his second straight funny car. This time, it's Dino Don Nicholson and his out-of-sight cougar. This monster looks like a stalker on the surface, but is actually a supercharged 1,200 horsepower fuel-burning engine covered by a fragile fiberglass shell. At stake, the Super Eliminator Championship. Stage rockets away with Nicholson in frantic pursuit. It's a race all the way with the rail shutting down the funny car at the top end with a record elapsed time of 7.91 seconds. Stage is the champ. Another title match, this time in super stock where Arlen Banky's Barracuda goes at it with Wally Booth's quick Camaro. In this run, over $6,000 is right on the line. Booth's lower horsepower car gets a slight handicap and is permitted to leave early. on the hair with Banky playing an incredible game of catch-up, nipping Booth in the last few feet at 118.11 miles an hour. The runoff for Stock Eliminator and the driver of the Corvette is 19-year-old Larry Lombardo, one of the youngest drivers at Indy. He's facing Dave Buell, driving his Dodge station wagon, and Lombardo is given a head start under the handicapping system. The young driver grabs a car length lead and drives hard for the line with Jewel at his heels. It's a tight finish with Lombardo the winner. In street eliminator class, Dave Copel in his flying Barracuda goes to the line with a new national record of 9.78 seconds and 141.28 miles per hour already in the bag. His competition, Sam Giannino at the wheel of a fierce looking Corvette that winds up to 9,600 RPM on the starting line. The Christmas tree wipes out Coble as Giannino romps home at 123.96 miles per hour. Canada has a representative in the final as Toronto's Carl Rowland makes a competition eliminator scene driving a Chevy-powered Fiat. His challenger is Harry Luciter of Pennsylvania at the wheel of an immaculate 1932 Ford, also sporting V8 Chevy power. Into the lights, and Lucifer backs off the line and restages closer to the strip edge. Here comes the green. 
Elusider is given the handicap advantage. Roland lightweight speedster takes up the chase in a valiant attempt to catch the fast fleeing Ford. But Lucifer holds off the Canadian in the stretch and takes the win and a new national elapsed time record of 11.54 seconds. Two more races remain for top fuel and top gas eliminator. In top gas, Wally Rhodes and the beautiful gas house gang gasser faces Jack Jones. Jones, setting up in the near lane, has encountered a series of minor disasters during this weekend, including a rash of blown engines and is a decided underdog. His engine is composed of pickup bits and pieces and appears to be better suited for a used car than a championship dragster. Undaunted, Jones leaps off the line and as Rhodes loses traction in the far lane, Jack raises his hand in a victory salute at 197 miles per hour. Jones, power side, 7.64 is the winning number. A losing 7 In an informal ceremony beside the starting line, Sergeant Wesley Poley, a SAC bomber crew chief, receives the keys to a new Pontiac GTO from George Hurst as Wally Parks, president of the National Hot Rod Association, offers his congratulations. Sergeant Poley picked the winner of the Firecracker 400 stock car race to top 23,000 other servicemen in the Hurst Armed Forces Club contest. Now, Sergeant Pauly proudly drives off with his parents, flown in especially for the ceremony from Ackley, Iowa. Here's another proud passenger. It's Linda Vaughn, the first lady of drag racing and the gal known as Miss Hurst Golden Shifter. Linda is a great favorite at the races. She begins her own special trip down the quarter mile, pausing to say hello to the Nationals chief starter, Buster Couch. Then she's off to greet the fans with her special brand of drag racing hospitality. And now we're back at the beginning for another look at Big Daddy's championship drive against Californian Steve Carbone. Carbone and his extremely potent Kreitz, Greer, and Donovan Fuller has put together four consecutive six-second runs during eliminations, and Big Daddy will have to be at his cool best. Carbone may be only seconds away from the drag racing record books. Tulsa base flyer has the horsepower, but King Rat has the psychological edge. Over 3,000 horsepower inches forward onto the launching pad. The Garlitz crew cleans every particle of grit from the huge 12-inch wide slicks, ensuring Big Daddy of optimum traction in this frantic climax to three days of racing. Carbone, apparently unmoved by the legend of Big Daddy, stages his long lean missile in the far lane. Garland leaps into an instant lead as Carbone stands on the throttle and his tires break loose right off the line. His chances for a Nationals crown go up in smoke. The King of Speed has done it again. It's thumbs up for Garlitz the man who puts Sefner, Florida, on the map. Lapse time, 6.87 seconds. Speed, 226 miles per hour. Big Daddy wins his second Nationals in a row and the third of a great career. Both unprecedented accomplishments in the sport. Suddenly it's over. The greatest drag race of them all is history. It's been a hectic weekend for the racers and the watchers alike. The competition was outstanding. And the scenery, you might say, was superb. But that's the way it is at Indy the best of everything. <laughs>